Ever wondered what a wallaby on a wild night out looks like? Well, stick around because I've got a story that'll make you hop with laughter. But first, let's talk about why you might be asking this question in the first place. So, you found yourself with a Bennett's wallaby bouncing around your backyard? First of all, wow! Secondly, you might be asking, what have I gotten myself into? Well, don't sweat it. I'm here to help you navigate this wild ride. Today, we're diving deep into the world of Bennett's wallabies, those adorable, bouncy bundles of joy from down under. But here's the thing. Bennett's wallabies aren't your average pets, and truth be told, they're not really recommended as pets at all. But if you've already got one, don't worry. I'm here to guide you on how to give your wallaby the best life possible. Let's start by getting to know your new buddy a bit better. Bennett's wallabies, also known by their fancy scientific name, Macropus rufogriseus, are actually a subspecies of the red-necked wallaby. These guys hail from Eastern Australia and Tasmania, where they roam free across open landscapes. They're not too big, but they're definitely not small either. Bennett's wallabies usually grow to about 70 to 90 centimeter tall, that's roughly two to three feet, and can weigh anywhere from 13 to 23 kilograms, about 30 to 50 pounds. So yeah, think of them as more than just oversized bunnies. Now let's talk about your wallaby's diet. These hoppers are strict herbivores, which means they won't be munching on crickets or mealworms anytime soon. Instead, Bennett's wallabies love to feast on grass, leaves, and herbs. If you've got a garden, watch out. Your wallaby might treat it like an all-you-can-eat salad bar. To keep your wallaby healthy and happy, try to mimic what they'd eat in the wild as closely as possible. Grass and hay should be their main course, but you can also supplement their diet with specialized wallaby pellets to make sure they're getting all the nutrients they need. Don't forget to mix things up with some leafy greens and herbs to keep their meals interesting. But, and this is important, avoid giving them human food. Wallabies have delicate digestive systems that can't handle processed foods, so stick to what's safe for them. Now let's address a big issue, the legality of keeping these critters as pets. Regulations on owning wallabies vary wildly depending on where you live. In some places, it's totally illegal to keep wallabies as pets unless you have the proper licenses or permits. You might even need special zoning or exotic animal permits. So before you even think about getting one, make sure you check your local laws. And just because you can legally own a wallaby doesn't mean you should. These animals have complex needs that make them better suited to wildlife sanctuaries or zoos. Speaking of complex needs, let's talk about space. Bennett's wallabies aren't exactly couch potatoes. They need a lot of room to hop around. If they're stuck in a small area, they're going to be pretty miserable. Ideally, your wallaby should have a large, secure outdoor enclosure with plenty of room to graze. Think of it as your wallaby's personal playground. Make sure to include trees, logs, and hiding spots to keep them mentally stimulated. It's not just about giving them space, it's about creating an environment where they can thrive. Let's dive into some more specific care tips. First, enrichment. Wallabies can get bored just like we do, and a bored wallaby can quickly become a destructive wallaby. To keep them entertained, make sure they have plenty of environmental enrichment. This could be anything from logs to climb on, to tunnels to explore, or even trees they can scratch. Next, social needs. If you have more than one wallaby, that's even better. They're social animals and tend to do well in small groups. Just make sure they're introduced properly to avoid any wallaby drama. Nobody wants a family feud in the backyard. Don't forget health care. Regular vet checkups are a must. Find a vet who specializes in exotic animals, preferably one with experience in marsupials. Keep an eye out for signs of stress or illness, like changes in behavior or appetite, and don't hesitate to take action if something seems off. Keep watching, we are getting to the story of the wallaby in the poppy field, but first let's finish the care tips. Also, remember parasite control. Fleas, ticks, and worms can be a big problem for wallabies, so make sure you're staying on top of that. Your exotic vet can recommend appropriate treatments. While wallabies are adaptable, they do best in moderate climates. If you live in an area with extreme temperatures, you'll need to provide shelter from the heat or cold. Also, minimize handling as much as possible. 
Wallabies aren't typically cuddly animals and can get stressed with too much human contact. Now you might be wondering, do Bennett's wallabies make good pets? The short answer is, not really, and here's why. First off, they have all these complex care requirements we've just talked about, plus they can be unpredictable, especially the males who might display aggressive behavior. These aren't animals that will happily curl up on your lap for a Netflix marathon. They're more likely to be hopping around at odd hours, like dawn, dusk, or even the middle of the night. But hey, I promised you a story about wallabies on a wild night out, didn't I? Well, hold on to your hats, because this is where things get really interesting. Picture this, you're in Tasmania strolling through a peaceful poppy field, admiring the flowers when suddenly you spot a group of Bennett's wallabies, hopping in circles and looking a bit, well, let's just say extra bouncy. No, you're not hallucinating. These wallabies are high as a kite. That's right, folks. In Tasmania, these adorable marsupials have been caught red-handed, or should I say red-pawed, munching on opium poppies grown for medicinal purposes. They eat the poppies and have been observed hopping in circles, apparently intoxicated. Even wallabies know how to have a good time, it seems. Talk about getting hopped up. Now, before you get any ideas about recreating this scene in your backyard, remember, we're aiming for responsible wallaby care here. No illicit substances for your bouncy buddy. Let's wrap up with a few more fun facts about Bennett's wallabies. These bouncy buddies are quite the athletes, capable of hopping at speeds up to 30 km h. That's faster than most of us can run. They're not just quick but well balanced too, using their powerful tails as a fifth limb for support. It's like having a built-in kickstand. Speaking of unexpected places to find wallabies, did you know there's been a colony living on the Isle of Man since the 1970s after a great escape from a wildlife park? Nature always finds a way. And if you think all wallabies look the same, think again. Some have a rare genetic mutation that makes them white, standing out like a sore thumb. Interestingly, most Bennett's wallabies are lefties, preferring to use their left hand for grooming and eating. Last but not least, these hoppers are surprisingly good swimmers. There have even been reports of them swimming in formation, looking like a marsupial synchronized swimming team. Who knew wallabies had such hidden talents? Next up, we're jumping from hopping marsupials to, well, something completely different. Here's a sneak peek about the green Acarius, who has a defense mechanism that would make a skunk blush. Now, here's a brain teaser for you to ponder until our next video. If a green Acarius and a Bennett's Wallaby had a race, but the green Acarius got a head start by hitching a ride on the Wallaby while it was high on poppies, who would win? Think about it and let us know your theories in the comments below. And remember, whether it's Wallabies or green Acarius, always research before considering any exotic pet. Your local wildlife will thank you. Stay curious, stay kind to animals, and we'll see you in the next video.